Good morning, everybody. Would you stand up and sing with us this morning? Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about it. Do you feel that empty feel? Cause shame's done all it's steel. You're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way when there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sin that any can save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong. Grace is free, and the good news is I know that He can do for you what He's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus, and let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah, 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 amen, amen. Who can wipe away the tears, the broken dreams?
awesome. We want to thanks to uh, all those that made that happen. Thank you for, for uh, supporting our students as they continue to, uh, to raise funds for NYC this summer. We have a record number of students going. I think it's up to 25 students that are now going next summer to NYC. It's just, it really, it really is uh, awesome. So, uh, you know, we're going to keep giving you opportunities to, uh, to give and to serve. And the next opportunity is quickly coming up. It is our golf tournament on the 29th. Uh, we're looking for those that would like to uh, to play golf or just hack around with some of us. Uh, that would be great. You don't great. have to be good. That's exactly right. Uh, or you can be a whole sponsor and donate to that. But uh, we want you to go to the Church Center app or go to the website, either one, and, and go ahead and register to either be a whole sponsor or to play in the tournament and be with us uh, that weekend. What else is going on, Bree? That next day, we're having our OCC bake sale. It's a great day if you haven't been a part of one because you can get everything that you need. If your in-laws are coming in town, if you want to get brownie points in the office, get some brownies here at the bake sale. Support OCC and our annual goal of raising our money for shipping right immediately following church that next day on Sunday right after the golf tournament. Also on that day, if you'll come back with us, we're having our trunk or treat. This is a great outreach for our community. If you've ever been here for a trunk or treat before, we see a lot of new faces because we believe that this event is for our community. That way we're known in the community as people that care about others. So if you want to sign up to bring your trunk, I've already got my theme picked out. Fantastic. We ordered our streamers and our balloons and our candy already on Amazon. Thank you, Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all at my house waiting for trunk or treat. You can sign up now when you go to sign up for the golf tournament, you can also sign up and register your trunk for that day as well. That is awesome. That is awesome. We're glad that you're with us this morning. I'm excited. We're starting a brand new series today called Family Matters, and we are just going to explore what that looks like in kind of our culture and our day and age to be able to take a look at where we believe really matters when it comes to being a healthy family. And so I'm excited for us to share today how we can take families from being average to being awesome families. So you picked a great day to be with us today. If you're on campus or if you're joining us online this morning, we are just glad that you've come to worship with us. I'm going to ask our ushers if they'll make their way forward this morning. We begin every Sunday in the same way. We receive tithes and offerings because we believe that our first act of faith is giving back to the God that provides for us. So will you pray with me this morning as we bless what he has given to us today. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for a chance to be in your presence, a chance to worship you today, God. We ask, God, that as we worship you and love you back for the way that you love us, God, that your Holy Spirit would just continue to fill this place as we feel you even in this very moment, God. And that you would take these gifts that we're giving to you, God, that you have blessed us with. Would you multiply them, use them, God, for the furtherance of your kingdom, both in this community, but also around the world. We pray this in your son, Jesus Christ's name, and all my family said, amen. Let's worship together. Why would I worry when giants come calling my name? My God is so much bigger than troubles I face. And why would I hunger for power or riches or fame? Well, my God is so much better than all of these things. I won't be shaken, I won't be moved, my God is faithful, His promise is true, so I'll speak to the mountains, oh it's time to move. My God is bigger, better, stronger, greater than you. My enemies scatter, cause they know the battle is done. My God is stronger, the victory is already won. Would you stand and sing this next part with me? Yeah, he died for my ransom 
and rose up on the third day. Cause my God is greater.
going to go to the Lord this morning, and I would just invite you to take whatever posture of prayer that you would desire to take this morning, whether that be to, to stand, to come and kneel at the altars this morning, to make your chair an altar this morning. We get so busy, and, and, and many of us have opportunity to pray throughout the week, but if we're honest with each other, a lot of times our prayer is just on the go to somewhere else. But on a morning like this, when we gather together with the entire family, we set aside this moment of of quietness, stillness. As the scripture tells us to be still, know that he is God. This is one of those moments where we are just still in his holy presence, acknowledging that he hears our prayers, that they don't stop at the ceiling, but that God desires to hear from his people. So we're praying for a number of things this morning. I got word just this morning that uh, Gracie needed to go to the hospital. She's having some issues this morning. Um, and so we want to pray uh, for her and for Steve this morning. Greatly miss them. Reports are good at this point as they continue to run tests. But we do want to pray uh, for Steve and Gracie this morning. Pray for those that are traveling. It's a, a mid-fall break weekend here for our school systems. And some are in the midst of traveling and maybe even joining us online this morning. And we want to pray for those that are in those places. We want to pray for you if this week has been uh, a difficult week. This is an opportunity for you to just come and to be still in his presence. So I'd invite you this morning, would you come? Would you find your posture of prayer as you bow and we prepare ourselves to pray together this morning? Heavenly Father, God, we come into your presence and we take a moment to simply be still, to acknowledge who you are, to acknowledge what you are doing in our lives, to acknowledge that you desire to hear from us as your sons and daughters. And whether or not we've come into this place for a week that has just been crazy and out of control, or whether it's just been a, a, another week, God, this is that moment where prayer seems different because we are collectively raising up together our voices to you. The family has come together to be able to know that we're not alone in the things that we are sharing, but the person on our right and the person on our left, God, they are enduring things or they are, are walking with you in ways that we get to walk hand in hand with them. God, we believe that, that church is not a one day experience, but that you've called us to be the family of God. So we celebrate in the highest of highs and we bond together in the lowest of lows. I pray that you would be with Stephen Gracie this morning, God you would bring them peace and that you would continue to find next steps uh, and what is next for them. God, this morning my heart is heavy for my friend Adam Kidwell who continues to battle. Lord God, would you be with him as he battles this cancer that continues to just ravage his body with not always the results that we are hoping for. God, we ask that you would be with Adam this morning. We continue to pray for David Rebello, who has a procedure this week, a member of our family who has since moved away, but is also struggling this morning. God, would you bring him peace? And God, my prayer this morning would be that you would alleviate some of the pain that he is having to endure through this process as well. Well, God, I don't know all the needs that are represented in this place, but I'm sure with the, the number that are with us this morning that there are others that are hurting with physical pain and emotional pain, relationship pain, God. I pray that you would bring peace in those moments, that you would bring direction, that you would bring next steps, God, that we would feel your presence in a real way. And, and maybe we would just open our hands and maybe we would just let go of trying to do it all on our own. And maybe we would take this opportunity to simply be still and say to you in the quietest of whispers, you are God and I am not, and I'm listening. No more talking, no more steps. I'm just listening 
for your word, listening for your direction, listening for where you want me to go. Church, as we close out this prayer this morning, will you pray the prayer that our Father has asked us to pray together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory for I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind As I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus Addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, the light will fall. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your
I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail pierced hands than to be Some of those beautiful families up there. You guys look really good up there. For the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about this idea of family matters and what that looks like. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, back in the day, there used to be a lot of portrayals of family, like on television and different things. Like, I know some of, there's some big Andy Griffith watchers in here. I know some of you uh, really enjoy some of those throwbacks. And then uh, kids of the 90s, kind of like me, we had must-see TV on Friday nights, and we would watch all these different shows about, about family. Well, we're going to spend the next couple of weeks on, on taking a look at what we understand to be so important and, and to really grab this concept that family matters. And I've already mentioned to you this morning, we, we want to take ourselves from being an average family to an awesome family. And I think there are a few ways that we can do that and a few things throughout the scripture that really help us to kind of grasp that concept. Um, who wouldn't want an awesome family? Right? I mean, like we, we, it doesn't matter if you're within the church or outside of the church. Family is something that we desire to have. And we all have this, this picture of family. Like when we picture family, we all picture that idea of awesome families, families that get together for, you know, holidays and celebrations and these things. Like some of you uh, do the, like the matching pajama thing, like at Christmas. Like that's not my deal, but that's great. If that's your deal, that's fantastic. You know, we envision this, this idea of perfect family. And so, so when we talk about a family matters, we want to get that kind of idea. Yes, I, I want that kind of family. But then this idea of focusing on the family for some of us brings up emotions or feelings that maybe aren't so pleasant. Maybe uh, this idea of family is difficult for us. Maybe we haven't had great family experiences in the past. Maybe within our family, there's been hurt or maybe there's been abuse or maybe there's been loneliness and, and we desired a, a matching pajama kind of family, but there's been a little more struggle to it than maybe we wanted to. So we wanna explore a little bit, not necessarily that we can become a matching pajama kind of family. That's not our end goal. 
But what we want to desire is how can our family reflect the idea of what God desires family to be? If you're with me, say, "Uh uh-huh. Here's the thing. We don't get to pick our family, but we have the power to lead the family that we have. That makes sense? Now, a lot of us know that. You're like, you guarantee we can't pick our family. You should see us at Christmas and holidays. You know, I, I wouldn't have picked these people, right? But the people that you have, the family that you have, you don't get to pick those people, but you have this opportunity to lead them going forward. So that's what we're gonna look at as we look at this. We wanna be awesome families, but just on accident, families are average. That's what we are. We're average. Because to have an awesome family, to have a healthy family, it takes intentionality. And that's what we're gonna focus on is this intentionalness on what God is trying to get us to today. Now, the elephant in the room would, would be this. We know without a doubt, we've talked about Andy Griffith days. We've talked about must-see TV in the 90s days. The idea of family and the culture that we have found ourselves in today is under attack. It's different. The family values, the things that are being portrayed are just different. And we could spend an entire hour talking about all the things that are against the family, but it would be a waste of our time. It would be a waste of our time to focus on all of the reasons and all of the the spiritual issues and economic issues and moral issues. There's too many to name. It would be a waste of our time to focus on all the things that are wrong when God desires for us to focus on what can be right what we have an opportunity to change, the way that we have an opportunity to lead. So we're gonna look at how do we focus on fighting for our family? Because I'll be honest, it's a battle. It's an everyday battle for us to have a healthy family. It's not just going to happen. Family doesn't just happen. It takes a tremendous amount of work a tremendous amount of decisions and thought process to be able to have healthy family. The families of Jerusalem were going through a time where this was not just a hypothetical battle that they found themselves in, but they found themselves in a real battle in that moment. And their leader, Nehemiah, comes to them on the front lines as they are actually battling and fighting and protecting. And he says this to them, After I have looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters and your wives and your homes. Nehemiah says, you're right. We are under attack. We do have these forces that are against us that are trying to rip apart our family. But look at your family in the eye. Know what it is that you are fighting for. Know why you have to make the tough decisions. Know why you have to have the hard conversations. Envision who it is that you're fighting for and that will give you the strength to continue to fight. Don't just accept it. Don't just accept that that the family is a struggle. Don't just accept that the world is the way that it is. And so that's just, it is what it is. And we'll just keep doing it. Fight and look them in the eye and remember why you fight. Remember why you are intentional in what you do. So we're gonna look at a couple of things. We're gonna have a little bit of fun today because I hope that these images will help us grasp a few points that will help us to move towards the family that we wanna be. The first is a picture of a board game many of you probably have seen before. How many of you have this board game in your home, even to this point, right? Some of us played this board game with our moms and dads, and then we turned around and played this board game with our own kids. Some of you then turned around and played it with your grandkids, right? Fantastic game, easy game, ages three and up, all right? So from the youngest of young, you can play this game. But do you realize how much this game teaches us about life? It's just the, the, the luck of the draw, basically. And all of a sudden you can take the ladder up based on what you roll, or you can take the chute down. And many of us go through life and we're as obedient as we are. And we know that we have days that help us to take a climb up. And then we experience days that we feel like we hit the chute all the way down. And so this concept is, 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 is great, but this is what I want us to understand about how we have this great family. Families have fun together. Families have fun together. Well, that doesn't sound very biblical. Well, it is. 
but also it's very practical in where we're at. This is why. Families today are too busy to play. We're too busy. Our calendars, our schedules, everything that we do is constantly on the go. So we're too tired to play because by the time we get home from everything that we've done, we don't have the energy anymore to interact like we used to. Family dinners around the table sound like an an ancient practice for many of us. This idea of, of, of being too worn out or too serious to play. We've started to, to, to enact like, well, family is all work, all uh, no play, always on the go, task and places. And, and family has started to reflect more of a boot camp than a family. And our kids are viewing the parents as drill sergeants that only responsibility is to give them orders and tell them what to do. That's not our job. And parents, sometimes we get into this role where maybe we don't view it as boot camp, but maybe we, we view it as a business and we're the CEO or the CFO and we're just trying to keep the organization running. And that's not the idea of family either. See, family is really more of an art because no family is exactly the same. No person is exactly the same. And the way that you raise your family and the way that I raise my family is not going to be the same. You're different than I am. Your kids are different than my kids. Your family is different in the way that you have been grown up and the things that you do. And what we have to do is we have to take this art and understand that the same formula doesn't work for every single family. But we have to find out how we get out of this one size fits all method and continue to focus on having a healthy family. And one of the ways we do that is having fun together. In Ecclesiastes, Solomon, one of the wisest men to ever live says this, I commend the enjoyment of life because there is nothing better for a person under the sun than to eat, drink, and be glad. Then the joy will accompany them in their toil all the days of life that God has given them under the sun. How many times have we said, man, life is just a grind right now. Life is just a daily, like, get to the next day, get through the next obstacle. It's, it's this grind. We've got to take time to enjoy life, and we need to settle for a slowdown every now and then. The world tells you to go, 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 but the Scripture is telling you find that time to be able to invest back into your family, that every day is important, not just some days. What we find ourselves doing is living for the weekend or living until we can get to a holiday or living until we can get to a vacation, And we're missing monumental moments with our family because we're just work, 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 work until we can get to this point where we just let go of. But every single day with your family matters. All of those days matter. We need to enjoy every day for one, because we're not promised tomorrow, but I have the opportunity to speak to so many of you that are stages ahead of me in life that tell me every single day, A day is coming where they won't be this age anymore. A day is coming where you will still be family, but it will look different. Enjoy these days, grasp these days. Do you know why that is so important? Why it is so important for the church to be a true intergenerational church with members of the family that are all ages and stages of life? Because all of us have something to learn from every age and stage of life. And so young people, young families, can I tell you right now, the grandmas and grandpas that are in this room that might not be your biological grandmas and grandpas have great wisdom that we need to listen into and hear from them because they have gone through these stages. And one of the things that they will constantly tell us is what I have said for a long time, it won't be like this for long. It won't be like this for long. So in that moment, many of you have seen this before, I started a Friday tradition with my family that pops up very often on Friday mornings. We go to breakfast together. And people ask me all the time, do you do this every Friday? For the most part, yes. For the most part, we set aside a time where we desire to be able to just instill into my kids that we were gonna start the weekend together acknowledging that point. And can I tell you some of the greatest things that we have done within our family or the greatest conversations that have happened have happened in 10 minutes over a table at breakfast before the weekend gets started. We have had incredible conversations. Now it started out with some conversations about, can you help me finish my homework? And that was fine. Most of the time I couldn't, but you know, that's where we were. We would do 
homework, we would talk about this, but you know what happens, moms and dads, as your kids continue to grow up? The conversation is less and less about what the homework is, and it's more and more about the relationships that are happening at school, or what has happened that week, or what they're about to face in the day ahead. And those intentional conversations of doing that have been so beneficial to us. But I need you to know if I'm being true that, you know, we've, we've gone to the donut den for a while. We've gone to Meredith's and Franklin for a while. Now we find ourselves at Mama Java in Nolensville on Fridays. It's not always easy to do it. And it's not always picture perfect. See, our life on social media always portrays that everything is great and fine. There are some days we want that 15 minutes of sleep back. There are some days where we don't want to take the effort to get up. And it's not just them. Sometimes it's mom and dad too. But we push through because we know how much that moment matters. And we know what it is shaping for us later in life. We know that we're letting our kids know that they are loved. But this is what I want you to know this morning. People often forget what you say, but they rarely forget how you make them feel. Does that make sense? I... We wanna instill this wisdom into our kids and so we feel like vocalizing it to them is going to be the way that we do it. But more often than not, they hear a lot less than what we think that they hear. But the way that we make them feel, that is what is computing to our kids. That's what's resonating with them. And it doesn't just happen in the family, but that happens in your workplace, that happens in your friendships, that happens in all of your relationships. It's much less about what you're saying and much more about the way that you make others feel. But you don't have to do anything that is, is out, you don't have to do extravagant vacations in order for them to feel like they're loved. You don't have to to spend a lot of money. You don't have to buy the best clothes. You don't have to buy them the latest iPhone, mom and dad, in order for them to feel, they're like, stop preaching. (laughs) You don't have to buy these extravagant gifts in order for them to experience the love that they have. Can I tell you what you need to do? The greatest gift that you can give your family is your time. It is the greatest gift that you can give your family and it doesn't cost you a thing. Be there, be present, make your family priority and have some fun while you're doing it. The next image this morning is this, a watering can. Why a watering can? What could a watering can have to do with family? Here you go. Awesome families encourage growth in each other. Awesome families discover the gifts and the talents and the abilities that each family member has, and then they live into those gifts. We don't try to make our family something that we want them to be. We explore what their passions are, their God-given talents are from God himself, and then we live into that. We, we allow that gift to flourish because it's been given by God to be used for his kingdom. And so we need to encourage that growth within our family. Families take work, they take constant care. They've gotta be watered and fed and all these different things the same way that a garden does. But it's everybody that has to grow in the family, not just our kids. Mom and dad, we say this all the time. We never graduate from our faith. It doesn't matter if you have been in the church since you were eight years old and now you're 88 years old. We all have more to learn when it comes to being a follower of Christ and the same is true within the family. You don't know everything. There's a constant sense of growing and learning to be who God wants us to be. Even Jesus continued to grow. I love this story in Luke 2. Do you remember in Luke 2 when Mary and Joseph lost Jesus? Y'all remember that? Parents, that should make us feel great, okay? We might have left our kid at church and gone to lunch without knowing that we left him at church. Anybody done that? Those two over there did. They left me at church one time, got all the way to the restaurant, and then the youth pastor was like, you forgot your kid. Okay, it happens, right? You, you, you just, you know, maybe you left your kid somewhere. Maybe you left him at a school activity because, you know, you just didn't know, whatever. They lost Jesus, the son of God. So I feel great. Just, just go ahead and forgive yourself for any time that you made uh, one, of those, one of those mishaps, right? But Mary and Joseph, what did they do? 
They go to find God, and here's what it says in Luke 2, 49. It says, why you were searching for me, uh, uh, why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. And then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And it says, Jesus himself grew. Look at this. Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with man. The son of God himself still had growing to do. He is the son of God sent to earth. And yet we see this demonstration of God coming into the house of the Lord and growing in some really key ways. It says that he, he grows in wisdom, right? He grows in this intellectual growth as he continues to grow. Then it says that he grows in stature, in this physical growth. We know that there's times of physical growth as we watch our families continue to grow with each other. And then he grew in favor with God. There's that spiritual growth, that design to continue to grow within the spirit. And then finally, there's this favor with man. That's a social growth. That's this how we get along with one another. Those are the ways that Jesus himself grew. And if we took those things and wrote them down somewhere or made a note somewhere and said, these are the goals and how we want our family to grow in these ways, in wisdom and stature and favor with God and favor with man, that is a fantastic blueprint for growth for you and your family. Take that opportunity. And when we talk about growing, those are the ways to grow. We gotta grow in the family because the family is the place that we're supposed to learn these different key things in life. We're supposed to learn how to handle our emotions, how to deal with what I feel. We're supposed to handle conflict correctly and learn what that looks like, how to discuss and to listen well. We've gotta learn within the family how we handle loss because can I tell you, every day is not a win. Every day is not a W. And at some point we've gotta teach within the family how we handle a loss or how we handle when things don't go the way that we want them to go. We need to learn what values matter most within the family. The family is where we learn values and, and, and in the home is where we learn values. We can't allow our kids to learn their value from the hallway or from YouTube or from celebrities. We, we can't. We have to take that responsibility on our own and be intentional on what it looks like to lead our family in healthy growth. And some of these things that are learned they're learned best when they're modeled within the home. Again, it's the actions. It's not the words. We can't stand up and say, this is how you should act if we're not being that example. We can't say that this is the way to a healthy life if we're not the ones that's modeling that and living that out for them. We grow best through that example. We grow best through conversations. I cannot tell you how many families remain to be average because they just avoid conversations that are difficult. The home is the place for the difficult conversation. The home is the place that I wanna have the difficult conversation because I want their, my children to be led from a biblical perspective and a God-ordained understanding from me instead of a screen or a friend. Can I tell you how we don't grow? And this is, this is one of those things that families deal with often. We don't grow through criticism or comparison. We don't. We might think that we're having a great conversation or we're leading our family well because we're criticizing our, our family members or we're criticizing them for what they're doing or the choices that they've made. Or at worst, we compare them. And criticism and comparison strangle growth. No person is the same, we've already said that. So, so we shouldn't expect anybody to look the same or act the same as somebody else. We should acknowledge those differences. So let me just give you a, a real quick one right here. Don't compare your spouse to another spouse. Don't do it. Don't compare your spouse to somebody else. Don't compare your kids to somebody else's kids. Don't do it. Don't compare your lawn. <laughs> Don't compare your home. Don't compare your vacation. Don't compare your job. Don't compare your neighborhood. Don't compare your side of town versus their side of town or your county versus their county. Stop comparing against everybody else. It strangles the growth of what God is designing and trying to do within you. When we criticize or compare, that is not encouraging healthy growth in our family. 
Galatians 6, 3 through 4 says, If anyone thinks that they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions and they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to somebody else. Awesome families grow together. Look at the third picture today. A raincoat. You're getting way out there, pastor. I don't understand. A raincoat has one job. When the elements of the world are against you, you put on the raincoat to be able to protect you from what is showering down against you. The family has to be a place of protection. The family has to be a place where we protect one another. Matthew 5 says, I tell you, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, that you may may be children of your Father in heaven. Because he causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. It says the sun is gonna shine on evil people just as much as it's gonna shine on good people. It says the rain is gonna pour on the righteous people just as much as it's gonna pour on the unrighteous. And we teach this all the time, but we've gotta continually be reminded storms in life are going to come, whether you are a follower of Christ or not. We are not immune to the storms of life. We just prayed up here this morning for incredible people that have dedicated their entire lives to God that are going through incredible storms in their life right now but their faith remains in the Father. Being a follower of Jesus doesn't mean that we're immune to these things. So we all experience these different storms, whether they be financial storms or physical storms or relational storms. And when we find ourselves in a storm, the place that we need to run to for protection is the family. The family should be that source of protection. We're gonna go through storms. Our kids are going through massive storms. Storms that if we are truly honest with ourselves, we truly can't even imagine the magnitude of the storms that they're going through. I've been in high school, I've been in college, not like this, we have not. We have not. The storms that they are facing are massive. And we have to figure out how we become that source of protection. Our kids aren't the only ones going through storms. Mom goes through storms. Dads go through storms. Our extended families go through storms. We understand that we all go through these storms. But mom and dad, our main goal is to protect our kids because kids need to be cared for. Kids need to be cared for. A couple ways that our kids need to be cared for. One, change. When change happens, we have to acknowledge the change that is happening for them. Different things happen in life, big changes happen and they need this place of protection when something happens. They need a place to recover when big change happens in their life. When they experience one of those losses, they need to know that the family is the place of protection that they can go to to be able to work through that change. When they go through a big change and and whether it's a move or whether it's a change in school or stage in life, when they go through big change, they need to know that the family is the place that they can recover from the change that they're experiencing. Number two, I call this alternative reality. We need to protect our kids from alternative reality. Let me explain this. Our kids are being hammered with concepts and ideas and philosophies from a broken world and a culture that is presenting those things as truth and reality, and they are not. We can't blame them. We're blaming our kids for the things that are coming out of their mouth or the reaction that's happening, but you need to understand the world is presenting the things that they are dealing with as absolute truths, and they're a lie. And so as family, We have to protect our kids and our family from this alternative reality that they have found themselves in. By the time that they're 18 years old, the the hours of screen time are countless to these days. The the numbers of of murder and killing that they have seen, the the numbers of sex portrayed in an immoral and and, and unhealthy way, in in, in just mainstream of mainstream, much less the the unfiltered things that they're seeing. 
They've seen unhealthy habits become normalized. They get an inaccurate picture of what body image is supposed to look like. And they have seen the value of life minimized, especially their own value of life minimized. That's what's happening. Many times our kids are provided for. We do our very best to provide for them, to give them, to meet their needs, to feed them. But families, we cannot just provide for our kids. We have to protect our kids too. And it's not fun. It's not easy to protect our kids from what they're watching and listening and scrolling through, the things that, that they're seeing and hearing, the life lessons from these friends and influencers and celebrities that are not qualified to shape their value and culture of life. We've got to speak against some of those things and we've got to do it in a healthy way. I've had parents actually tell me, well, they're, they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out one way or another. 15 plus years in youth ministry and a number of opportunities through students and meeting with families, I've heard that statement more than I want to. Well, they'll, they'll, have, to, they'll have to grow through it or they'll have to learn and some way they will. That's not healthy parenting. Protecting our kids is parenting. Doing the hard things, knowing what they're seeing, knowing who they're talking to, knowing who their friends are, knowing what apps they have, approving the social media that you as a family have decided is healthy or not healthy for you and your family. Setting boundaries, setting rules, but here's the key, enforcing them after you set them. I'm sitting here preaching to myself. 43 years old with three kids of my own. And I know this to be true. In order to make this work and to protect our kids to the best we can, we can't just sit by and say, they'll figure it out. We have to take the initiative to be able to protect our kids. The last one is this, and I'm seeing it more and more and more. We have to protect our kids from rejection. When you experience rejection, the family has to be that place of protection when things don't go the way that you think that they're gonna go. Like when you don't make the team, when you don't get the part, when you don't get the job, you don't get the promotion, when you're hurt in a relationship or a friendship, the family has to be the place that you go for protection. Friends are great. We want our kids to have friends, but friends are not family. They're not family. And so when there is rejection, they need to know that the place of protection they can go to and the place that they will feel most safe is within the family. Uh, our kids are not the only ones. I already said this before, that, that, that these things all happen to all of us. But, you know, I, obviously talking about family this morning, but I wanna talk to a few of you that are in this unique stage in life that you find yourselves in now. Some of you have reached a stage in lives where your parents once protected you, but now it's, your job to protect them. Like at one point they cared for you and fed you and now you find yourself in the role of being the protector and the, and the caring for. And I have conversations with, with those of you that are entering that stage of life all the time. It's a difficult stage to navigate and I want you to feel heard this morning. As we raise healthy families, family doesn't just end at, at 18 years old. Family is forever. And so as you endure this family forever concept, that means at one point where you parented your own kids, at some point you become this stage where you have to now care for your parents. You are seen because healthy families protect each other through all stages of life. So we've said this, we've said that awesome families have fun together, that they grow together, that they protect each other. And the last one is this, it's a globe. This globe tells us this morning that families that care about others are healthy families. They care about others in their family besides themselves. They care about others outside their family. They care for others all around the world. Anyone can care about their own family, that's easy. We have a passion for our own family. We have a passion for our own family to be healthy. But in order for your family to be healthy, you've got to begin to see beyond just what is best for your family and how does your family interact and care for the other families that are around you. 
We can't just worry about our needs. We can't just care that my kid doesn't make the team. We can't just worry that, that whatever happens to others is just their own thing. We can't just worry about how this affects my family and my needs and my schedule and my this and that and whatever. We were created to serve God and to serve others. So parents, we've got to teach our kids that it is not all about them. We have to teach them that because that this culture is telling them constantly, day after day, just do you, just do what makes you feel good, just, just, it's all about you, that that's not the concept of a Christian home. But a Christian home is not all about us. Kids aren't the only ones that need to know this, mom and dad, we gotta know this too. No one matters more than another person to God. No one matters more. We are all tied for first place in the eyes of God. Siblings, skin color, age, what side of town, what job, how long you've been a Christian, or even if you are not a Christian, no one is less than another person in the eyes of God. Everyone matters. We talked last week about investing and we talked about this idea of investing when it comes to, to financially investing, but that's not the only way that we invest. We also invest in relationships. We talked about pumpkins and picking last week. Let me tell you a story. I'm proud of you. I'm very proud of you as your leader and as your pastor, what happened at pumpkins and picking last week. Last week, we front yard is full of, of great music. It's full of incredible food and, and we're hanging out together and everything's great. And I look around and you know what happens? I don't know everybody that's there. What a beautiful concept. What a beautiful picture of the church. I don't know everybody that's here. And so I see some of you and I made my way around to be able to introduce myself and meet some of the other people that are there. I met two families that I spent an extensive amount of time talking about because as the pastor, you know, I'm gonna ask the curious question. Why are you here? How did you get here? All these different things. I broke down in tears as I shared these stories to our staff in staff meeting on Tuesday. Our world is struggling and desires more than anything ever to find healthy relationship, to find community. As I spoke to both of these families, the conversations that were had were, I didn't know how I would be treated because I didn't come from here. I didn't know what to expect, but I know that my children need to know what church is all about. So I'm here for them. Okay, great. But the more that we talk to one another, both mom and dad, both, both times, both said, what do you have for men's ministry? What do you have for moms and dads? What do you have for family? Our world is easy to say, I need community for my kids because that's the easy button. But the truth of the matter is everyone needs community, authentic community, real community, loving community, non-judgmental community. And both of these families said, this was the most incredible night because I've never felt so accepted, so loved, and so welcomed. As your pastor and leader, there is nothing more that I would love to hear from a person that steps on campus than to say, your church family is the most loving, accepting, and welcoming bunch of people I've ever experienced. That's healthy. Investing into relationship is where that happens. Both families said, and I quote, this place is different than other places I have been to. I've had the opportunity throughout my life as I talk about this worldview and what it looks like to be able to, to think of others. I've been blessed to be able to experience mission trips at different stages of my life. I've had the opportunity to be within country and out of the country to see the way that different cultures and places live. And every single time that I do that, I am reminded of how much others matter to God. 
And I get outside of my comfortable bubble, my everyday routine, and God shows me the, the faces of people that are different than me. And I realize and remember how significant and important this view is for all of us. So I'll let you in on a little secret this morning. As we met together as a board at the beginning of this year, I asked the board to begin praying with me because I have felt led on my heart for the last few years. It is time for this church to begin experiencing once again what it looks like to be able to do mission together, to be able to see faces, to be able to go, to be able to experience other cultures. I said, I don't have the place, I don't have the way, but I am praying. And I asked our church board to begin praying that in 2024, that God would lead us in the place that he wants us to go as a church and begin opportunity that we would consistently have an opportunity to go to other places and to see other cultures. Because it is hard to have a world perspective if we never get out of our own community. So the church board has continued to be praying with me, but now I've said it in public and I'm putting it on you. Will you pray that God will show us where he wants us to begin this journey of going and seeing other cultures and places? It's not next summer, and some of you are like, why not? Well, because there's a lot going on next summer with NYC and everything else, and we don't have the, the resources to do it. It's going to take a little planning. But by 2024, I am praying that God will reveal to us where to go, because I believe that missions is not just to help someone else. That is fantastic, but missions helps us have the worldview and perspective that we need to have in order to be true followers of Christ. I gotta close with this this morning. We gotta get out of here. Awesome families are not perfect families. Awesome families are just intentional families. We're not gonna get it all right. We're gonna make mistakes along the way. We're gonna have conversations and we'll reflect back on it as family and parents and go, that didn't really go the way that I thought it was gonna go. We're gonna make rules and decisions and we're gonna have different places and things that we do and, 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 and it might not always work out, but it's not about everything working to perfection. It's really this combination of just being loving and intentional and seeking wisdom from the Father to know that a healthy family doesn't just happen. It's not just gonna be great unless we do the work, seek his wisdom and become intentional with where God wants us to go and what he wants us to do. Famous line in scripture that we quote all the time in Joshua 24 says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Some of you got out on plaque somewhere or plate somewhere and, and your mama and your grandmama and people have been quoting it to you your whole life. Let me just remind you again this morning. You can't keep comparing what the rest of the world does. You can't keep observing what everyone else does. You can't keep trying to, to even within the own church and even saying, how come my family can't be more like that? Or I wish my family would be like this or my concept of family was gonna be like this. We have to let go of those things and simply say, all I can do is today say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord in whatever way that looks like in whatever way we can make that happen. So the charge to you would be this. You wanna not have an average family? You wanna to begin to have a family that is healthy and going in the direction of the Father? Wake up tomorrow morning and pray together. As for us and our house, we will serve the Lord. You know what you do the next day? As for us and our house, we will serve the Lord. And then the next day, and then the next day, and then the next day. Because this intentionality is not a one-time commitment. It is a daily walk and exercise with the Father. That's the desire of my heart. Will you stand with me this morning? Heavenly Father, God, we come in this place and we would think that a sermon on family would just be fun and it would just be great. But God, it is difficult because it hits very close to home and where many places where we find ourselves today. Some of us understand what it looks like and a desire to have an incredible family, a healthy family, an awesome family. And maybe we have felt like our family is not that. Maybe we have felt like it's not what we intended it to be. Our, our role and responsibility is not to fix the past. It's not to, to, to fix anything that has gone before. Our only simple role is to be intentional today and say from this day forward, 
As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This day forward, I can't choose the family that I have, but I can choose the family that I can lead and I can choose the way in which I'm going to lead them. And I'm not gonna compare it to anything else that the world says or anyone else says, but I'm gonna follow your Holy Spirit, your guidance, your path, your direction. And I'm gonna serve you tomorrow and the next day and the next day until the day that I'm reunited with you. It's my heavenly father. Pray this in your son Jesus Christ's name. All my family said. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Sing your name is power. Your name is power. And your name is healing. And your name is life. Break through the strongholds and shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Would you read this with me? To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Hope you guys have a good week.